Okay, Rosie here. Life story number four. Some things I want to talk about, like in a little more detail, like when I was going to the Christian school in middle school. Um, well, there, there was one I went to in grade school. It was a different one, Christian school. Um, so, like how I mentioned in the other video about Christian middle school, like sometimes we'd like pass notes between like the dividers between desks. I just wanted to explain more about how the school was set up. So there are approximately like 50 kids, maybe 60 tops. There were like kindergartners were in one room, I think, and then first graders and second graders were in one room downstairs of the church. And the classroom I spent most of my time in was the third through eighth grade class. And then there were high school students upstairs, about 10 of them. And uh, I was there from 6th through ninth grade. Um, so when I switched to public school for 10th grade, I had to complete public school in three years. So I didn't get study hall or anything. But I was up for the challenge at that point, And I wanted a different experience. And I wanted to try to be social and make friends and not be shy. I thought I could like change my whole persona, personality if I went to a different school, because no one would know who I was. Um, this is after my mom had left the house after a probably psychotic break that year. So my dad was now the guardian primarily watching us and um, we could kind of do whatever we wanted with him. So he wasn't deciding the school, I was, because I was basically the parent. <laughs> in a lot of ways but um anyways at this point then my two younger brothers also didn't go to the christian school anymore my one brother went to high school with me who was younger than me and my other one went to grade school um but so yeah, okay, so I guess I'm going to a different story, but when I first entered Hellgate High School in Missoula, Montana, um, part of why I wanted to go there was my friend Shay had left Christian Assembly Four Square Academy. I'm not sure why, but, um, yeah, she was my best friend at that point, and I wanted to be with her, and she said Hellgate was great, and she was making lots of friends, and she'd tell me about the fun time she was having. Um, which I wish she would have invited me to, but neither here nor there. Um, so I go to Hellgate High School, me and her, and this other girl we meet in gym class, my brother, and... A uh, friend he met on the bus, a uh, Native American. Um, we all sit at a table and eat every lunch, you know? So it feels good. Like, I'm in a social situation. Like, because ninth grade in the Christian school, I had spent not eating lunch because I was so afraid of the other high schoolers. So, like, I felt like... Um, pretty happy be like part of a social situation even if I barely said anything <laughs> I would laugh at a lot of things <laughs> as I still do and people don't know exactly why I guess it's that find the funny thing I'm pretty good at doing that <laughs> people never know why I'm laughing but some people like it some people don't um someone speculated at one point it was why my figure was so trim in high school because of how much I laughed um but, yes, that was a fun time at first. I guess, like, within a month or two, my friends kind of conspired for me to date my brother's friend. Which I, I had a crush on him. At that point, I didn't know, but he had more of a crush on um, the other girl who sat at the table from gym class. 
which he did tell me. He told me about all his ex-girlfriends and whatever before he asked me out when we were sitting on the couch because my friends like told him I had a crush on him so then he asked me out. You know how that goes. I hope it still goes that way at school. I hope people are still going on dates. I don't know. The internet. Okay. So, um... Which I thought was pretty lame for him to tell me about all his other girlfriends <laughs> at that point. I mean, we all do that at some point in a relationship, right? Hopefully not too much because it's just a little sidetracking. But, um... Yeah, so we're dating for a while. Um... We wait about three months to have sex, you know, so. I don't want to go into that because I don't know if you're supposed to on YouTube. <laughs> anyway, so. At this point, my friend group kind of disintegrates. And um, my best friend from the Christian school feels like I'm not hanging out with her anymore. Because I'm not. And her mom at one point tells me I need to put my friends before my boyfriends. Which I, I don't think that's really how it should go exactly, but um but I should have whatever. It's the first time I had a boyfriend, it's the first time I kissed anybody, you know. I didn't really know why. Probably just because I was kind of shy, but... I'd been, like, asked to things by boys in grade school and went, but... This was, like, the most intimate I'd ever been with someone. And, like, he wasn't the best person to choose for this, because he would kind of, like, put me down in subtle ways. But compared to men I dated after him, it wasn't quite as bad. He just had generally the same kind of attitude, like he'd put other people down to make himself feel better. He's, which is what a bully is, basically. Um, so when I'd like be singing to him in my room or something like the Judds, uh, along with the radio, like uh, he'd point out when I missed a word or came in late which I still do. There's just certain things like I may always make mistakes on and I'm okay with that, but I noticed he was doing this stuff and it didn't make me feel good. So my best friend no longer really want to be friends with me from what I could tell. We still hung out a little bit. The other girl from gym class never really liked me. She was just trying to be friends with my best friend because my best friend had some money and some horses and she was looking for a new family. She wanted to be adopted. <laughs> um, so one day in gym class, I told that girl that um, I thought that my best friend wasn't really facing up to what she needed to face up to because she had left the school before the end of the year because of a bully. And she'd done this multiple times before. And every time she would leave the school. And I got like bullied a little bit here and there. I didn't take it too seriously because I knew kind of what it was about. It's basically just about jealousy most of the time, some way or another. Um, so, I'm getting really hungry. Uh, I'll try to tell a little more of the story. Um, So, like, fast forward to junior year of high school. I no longer have any friends. I've broken up with my boyfriend. Um, he starts dating one of my other friends who decided to transfer from the Christian school. <coughs> <coughs> so, 
So I try to sit with like lots of different groups of people. Mostly like the, what I thought were like the outcasts, but the school wasn't particularly like that. Like you could still sit with like a table even if you weren't part of the particular group. See, I knew like a few people here and there from a lot of different groups. So the only people I didn't try to sit with was like the cowboys, like the people who owned horses, because I just and wore cowboy hats and boots, like lived on ranches outside the city. Even though I knew someone from choir class I really liked. Um, who sat at that table, because I just felt like it would be too awkward. <laughs> but I tried lots of other places to sit. So I sat with like the people who didn't really fit into any group. Sat with them for a bit, it didn't feel very good, didn't feel like I fit in. And then I sat with a mix of like popular weird kids. How are you supposed to describe people? I don't know. This is what I thought at the time. Um and who else I try to sit with? Theater. Theater kids. Theater kids were probably the ones that were the easiest to be around. It's kind of a weird thing I do sometimes. If I like being around a group of people, I kind of get really scared and sometimes won't ever talk to them again. Not in a rude way, like because they sit, they would sit um, somewhere close to the offices for lunch. It's just that um, I get scared of like, uh, like actually having friends, I think. But um, so then I tried to sit with. I don't know where I, I knew her. Someone who had grown up in another country um, and mostly lived around um, black people and gone to school and she'd been discriminated against for being white. So that was an interesting story. But um, she was now at Hellgate. But uh, yeah. So I tried to sit with her. It was just always like I'd be sitting there and like I'm not really part of the conversation. And so sometimes I would try to join the conversation somehow, but it didn't really like work and I couldn't keep coming up with things. And if I did like somehow get into the conversation, I'd feel so nervous the rest of lunch that I really couldn't get back into the conversation. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really know how to describe this. Like even when that year I went to therapy, I don't remember her saying anything about anxiety or depression. These weren't really particularly words that were tossed around at that point. This would have been 2006. But, um, there was a lot of other stuff that happened that year, but uh, after trying to be part of all these different social groups and not feeling like I fit in, and the ones I thought like I kind of fit in more, I just felt discouraged. I would kind of take out like what I felt was happening at school, like into my music, like I felt like I wasn't being accepted. Which was a little different than the way I felt the rest of my life. Like when I first went to the Christian school for middle school in sixth grade, um, I would sit on the swings outside during lunch or break. I don't think I'd really go to break. But during lunch, I'd just sit on the swing and kind of put my head down and be sad. And a lot of times I wouldn't even swing. And I kind of forgot about these things for a long time. I kind of blocked them out. As I grew up, I kind of put some like hardened exterior around my shyness. And like, sometimes I can be really social. I I'm pretty good at it now, really. I'm kind of skilled. Probably because I worked in customer service for a long time. It's just, 
a lot of times I don't really like being social or talking. I kind of would rather just like watch people. <laughs> My great grandmother liked to do that, like sit on a bench in the mall and watch people go by. <laughs> Probably a better show than television, <laughs> but uh, malls are quickly not existing, but there's other places you can sit. Um, It's not really something I ever felt comfortable doing because I didn't want to make eye contact with the people I was watching. <laughs> Even like uh, when I'm singing outside or on stage, I don't really like to make eye contact with anybody. It's just too awkward. <laughs> and sometimes I do. Like if I'm in a really powerful state. But the point was like this rejection I felt in high school and like I didn't fit in with any of my peers, which was probably true. But it's also the point at which a first in a series of long depressions started. I, don't, I probably wasn't being as rejected as I thought I was, but I was pretty closed down and I stu still do feel that I'm different from other people. You know, my mom assured me I'm not. <laughs> but, um... So, I channel this, like, rejection into, like, being accepted in music. And I'd bring, like, my A-game. And, like, this really, like, powerful mentality. Like, I couldn't lose. To the situation. When I'd, like, go on stage and open mic. My dad would take me when I was in high school. On Monday nights and um, so I had these like two conflicting realities where like I believed everything was possible and that got me some like serious traction like in Missoula for like singing everywhere because I just kept pushing forward and wouldn't give up but like in school it was the opposite like I felt so rejected I still did my schoolwork whatever it was really fairly simple for me, for the most part, compared to whatever. School had always been simple, relatively speaking, except certain subjects. I was never great at, like, higher level mathematics or chemistry. But, um... Yeah. So... This, like, diversions divergence of who I was continued into like senior year of high school it was just really hard for me because I could see this like powerful successful person on one end and I was hiding how depressed I was from pretty much everybody yet they'd walk up I'd just flip a switch and change my face to be happy and be bright and gregarious and outgoing when it's really not how I felt. <sighs> so in that way, as I said once to someone I knew, I felt like two different people. And, um... My ex-husband mostly interacted with the person who was depressed, which I know would be kind of hard for anybody, but my interactions with him made me more depressed because he would like, he didn't want me to travel, he didn't want me to play music. And he always, like, would get suspicious whenever I'd try to hang out with any group of people. That I was trying to find a different man, so he'd sabotage any, uh, 